from all around you long. I'm here to tell you how football is strong. We're the best. And welcome back. And yes, this afternoon, it is all on. It's the culmination of a magnificent year in GDFL footy in 2011. It is the grand final, and it is right out at St Albans Park. And, of course, it'll be a live telecast on Channel 31, Digital 44. The two sides that have set the benchmark all year will be playing off for this mm. cup right beside me, the one that Grubby's holding up. It is <laughs> the Smiths Holden Premiership Cup, and it'll be a fantastic day indeed. I'll go firstly to Dale Smith and ask Dale Smith. Dale... Who will win the grand final in 2011 and why will they win it? I think Belpost Hill, because every time I've seen them play this year, they seem to have the wood over East Geelong, and I'm not too sure whether the improvement in East Geelong can be as great as what Belpost Hill can still display. Um, they're a pretty good balanced side. They're a side that, uh, from the whole time that I've seen them for the last two years, they haven't changed their game plan, I don't think, once. They never panic when they're behind, and they seem to be able to find themselves and get themselves out of trouble if they do get in there. And as I said, it's done now with uh, you know a multi plonged attack. They've got um, Gergig up front, Jovanovic's up front, Tars now coming to the side, and he's kicking goals for them. So they've got three tools. Obviously, the conditions might play a little bit against if it, the wind and the rain continues. Uh, but then they've got the crumbing forwards. They've got Hull's flying, they've got Tobin and those sort of players that can get in there. And Caleb Basley's another bloke that can kick some goals. So well, I think they're a better balanced side. I just think they've got a bit good, a good spread. Uh, their defence is holding up very, very well. And if Scroblack does go forward, then I think that uh, Gergic will have to go back and play on him because that still leaves him enough up forward to win the game of football. So that's uh, where I think it is. Um, Symes is going to have to work hard with the big fellas in the middle of the ground. But over the oh, over, I just think Belfast still might just hold sway. Jason, both sides are inundated with, with uh, stars and a great, uh, great performing players. None better, of course, than the, uh, the century goal kicking full forward from the East Geelong Eagles, Lucas Murphy. How do you think he'll go this afternoon? He's going to have a great battle with Steve Overall at fullback mm. for Bell Post Hill. They've had a couple of great battles already, and uh, it's, it's amazing Steve Overall is not the biggest bloke ever, and uh, he just seems to get the job done. He just knows where to move his body, and he, he especially a couple of weeks ago against Murphy, I know he kicked three or four, but uh, did a pretty reasonable job on him, and they're going to have a great clash. Uh, you know, Murphy, along with Kloster, uh, are going to be probably the keys up forward for East Geelong. And uh, I think they need to come up with something totally out of the bag each along because I think that if they come along with their same game that they've played against Bell Post Hill and against other sides in the finals, I don't know whether it'll be enough. So they need to come up with something completely different. I think Dale's been calling for it for weeks and I just I, I hope it does. I hope they start with Bolton in the middle and they put Scrobelac forward. I think it would it might charm you know, might just sort of seize the day a little bit and Bell Post Hill might have to rearrange. Because um, if they come out and just do the same old, same old, Bell Post Hill will just do what they've done, the same old, same old, be able to control the play and uh, and beat the press from East Geelong and be able to move the ball as slowly or as quickly as they do. And uh, they, I, th I think they move the ball better than East Geelong, so that might be the difference. But if East can come out and do something completely different in their game plan and just sort of rattle the Panthers a bit mm. early, I think uh, it might be game on. Dale, um, the St Albans ground, the chance there might be a little bit of wind around this afternoon. That can play a big factor on this ground, at, or that ground out there. It's uh, wind. Uh, if you get the advantage of the wind in the first quarter, it can play a big part in how you get going for the game. Yeah, look, you, you always want to start yourself off as well as possible in the game. You just don't know what the wind's going to do, whether it dries up, picks up and go, or turns around and blows the other way. So while it's there, that both sides will use it and use it to their advantage. As I said, it was interesting uh, last weekend that even going back the other way, Dick, towards the trees, I know there wasn't much of a breeze last week and you really couldn't get better conditions for final football than what we've had so far. But once you get up under the protection of those trees, players can kick, you know, 45 to 50 metres without any trouble. But uh, as I said, what we're expecting this afternoon is going to be a little bit different. As I said, I think the balance now for, for both these sides has got to be that they've got to be able to attack well and attack attack cleanly and if they can get the ball and get some really good clean use in their forward line then as Jason said it could be it could open themselves up to a really good mm. contest and, and we really need one because the games so far to date have been okay but there's only a really good one we've seen has probably been the Inverleague where every game because of the uh, the way it was handled and done. Jay, psychologically how would the East Geelong players be feeling after that well the way that Bell Post still absolutely cleaned them up in that qualifying final can they overcome that and, and come back today with a complete new outlook or will it be on their mind you think? Well I think they have to they have to blank it out. I'm sure Adam Scrobelak would have said to them last Saturday, let's just worry about this one game because anything can happen. It's a you know, grand finals. We've seen it year after year. They're strange, they're strange games. Anything can happen. It really is going to be whose side with the bottom six are going to play the best. 
out of mm. out of the teams because both, as you said, both teams are laden with stars, and the stars will stand up and they will play Jovanovic and um, and you know Martin and you know Moreland and players like that for Bell Post Hill for East Geelong the same Ricky O'Toole, that, Robertson, they'll play well. It's who can get the most out of their bottom six players in their uh, and the blokes who come off the bench are they going to have an impact? And that's where blokes like Ben Bolton is going to be crucial for East Geelong. Uh, when he comes on, and they're really going to have to get something out of those blokes, and if they can do that, then they're going to have a chance. If Bell Post Hills bottom six play to to where they've been, then they're going to be uh, they're going to be on the money, I think. So, it'll it'll be a case of you know put it right out of your minds. It's a one game off. Let's see how we go for East Geelong and see if they can come back. Dale, um, these two clubs obviously have dominated the uh, the competition the last couple of years. East Geelong winning it uh, two years ago, but a lot of it was tarnished by the tragic circumstances that followed from that game. And I guess a lot of people would say East Geelong are still owed a grand final win that they can celebrate properly this time. Yeah, look, that'd be right, Dick. And as I said, that, you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. And they're a quality side, and they've been able to keep this uh, group together for those last couple of years. And just to add two or three, they lost a couple of quality footballers last year, but they've brought in two or three more this year. Young Nolan, as I said, is only an under-18 kid, can still play, but he's got good size and pretty good balance. So he's been real handy for them. Connor's up forward, probably hasn't hit his straps firmly in the final series, but I reckon he's not too far away. And with Jason said, these both sides do use their benches fairly heavily. Um, I know Bell Post Hill are right into it. Invalid tried to do it last week, but probably not as much in the second half. But I think the use of their bench is going to be very important. As I said, it's uh, a long campaign, one for East Geelong, but Bell Post Hill may be a little bit fresh because they've had that game, had the week off, and now come back for a grand final. So it's, uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see during the week mm. what uh, Brent Gergie did with his blokes to get them right for a grand final to keep their fitness and level up whereas Adam Scroblack I reckon might have just gone to a preservation mode and, and made sure that it was a light nut week on the track and just trying to get those little sore spots a little bit well a little bit better than they're probably going to be if they had to been able to have to put in a full training week so Indeed. it'll be just uh, interesting to see how they both come out and I reckon that, look it won't take long to work out where this game's going to go I don't think I reckon by quarter time the indications will be there um, and we just hope, as I said, I'm really hoping that we get the quality game that we've been looking for. And with one and two on the ladder mm. in the year with one loss each, we're going to get it. It's going to get it. Yeah, we hope it's not a blowout early. So it'll be a fantastic afternoon indeed. And of course, don't forget, you can don't get out there this afternoon and buy crikey, you should get out there because it'll be an absolute ripper. But if you can't and you're at the local pub or the club or down at Buckley's or you're at home, make sure you tune in to Digital 44, Channel 31 for a magnificent live telecast of this fantastic game. Well, good luck this afternoon to you guys for the great call. And uh, once again, it's been a fantastic season. We've enjoyed your company, don't you worry about that. But thank you very much to the GDFL, Neville and the boys, and the lady, and the lady of course, Margaret, for allowing us to put this show on. To Noel Fanning, the man who gets behind the screen and uh, tells us what to do and absolutely is the ground, is the man who uh, looks after all Dale Burns himself in the sparkles. <laughs> A magnificent floor manager, Brian Cogsy Coughlin, for the great job that he does, and Cal Lowther for the interviews he does throughout the season. Well, it's goodbye from me today, and I tell you what, there's Smitty going to burn the set down. We've enjoyed your company all year. We look forward to your company again in 2012. So it's goodbye from Jason. Hello, bye-bye. And it's goodbye from Dale, who's got the sparklers going 100 miles with, an hour with there. Dick, with Dick's breakfast. And, yeah, thank you very much. He's stuck out in me dim sim. And, of course, it's goodbye from me. Have a fantastic Christmas. See you all again in 2012. Good luck to the Panthers and the Eagles this afternoon. Bye for now.